number are we 86 we are a touchline run we're here again with paddy we are going to be talking tonight the premier league we're going to look back at our predictions from the start of the mm -hmm. season looking forward to that. and mm. see how accurate we were that's going to be really good yeah uh we're going to talk a little bit about man, man united and the we're going to dissect rest. united dissect and then yeah we're going to talk the fa cup as well because that's a big old game there's, there's goalkeepers some goalkeeper chats going to happen I'm looking forward to that. Yeah. yeah. Let's get into it? Yeah. Go. Let's go. Squad's too thin. Squad's too thin, Andy. And, uh, you know, thing is, I always expect to compete in Europe and in the league. The number you have dialed has been changed. The new number is... Number are we 86. Man marking the hot issues. This is this is the part where do you know what I'm doing? Yeah. I'm making an incision. Do you know why? Why? I'm dissecting something. Do you know what the body is? What? Manchester United. <laughs> Right, okay. just quickly, we're just going to blitz through what we can remember off the top of our little noggins, our brain noggins, what we, what happened at the beginning of the season, full of hope, full of joy. We've gone here, look, Man United, United, United. Yeah. To finish in the top four. Gone from that to the, we're going to talk the Mourinho area very quickly, and then we're going to just tap into a little bit of Ollie, yeah. the highs of Ollie, and then the swift and... The subsequent picking up Decline. one point against Huddersfield and Cardiff. So what, what, guys, 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 what can you remember about Man United at the beginning of the season? Do you know what I can remember at the start of the season is the genuine hope Keep it brief. of saying, do you know what, I think United was second last season yeah. and Mourinho's going into it on a new contract and everyone says Mourinho can't do it in his third season and I went... I genuinely think Man United have got a chance of winning the title this season. Under Jose, I thought he would want to prove everyone wrong at the club, this massive club. He wanted to prove everyone that he was like, no, I can do it in the third season where I can stay somewhere and be successful. I remember the hope, Alex, at the start of the there season. There was a lot of hope. The hope. What can happen? Jose Mourinho there until it got to a point where I've never seen a breaking point like it. And I'll go into a little bit of the negativity in the game, <laughs> but that w was out of control, the amount of abuse and hatred towards United and that Mourinho team okay. way back then. To lead into the one of the, the games which I remember most, and I've never seen, I, I rarely see such high pressure, drained, exhausted players than I did when Man United just about beat Newcastle at home. The three two because yeah. they were two 0 up and they were getting slated in a time when Mourinho was on his knees and then to come back yeah. from that and to just gr just to, was... to work so hard on getting a result just to appease people and it wouldn't have mattered anyway for the press if they'd gone down two 0 two all still wasn't good enough because they were saying well we're still not winning even three two and all those players were really drained still yeah. at the back of that they were still oh it's not my Man United like this is a case of bad management and Woodward oh, and everything else is rubbish oh, and, and Paul Pogba got stupid air oh, all this kind of chaos <laughs> yeah it was chaos so I've it? never seen such a pressure cooker put on a manager who is it is it is remember still that image of that still game where it. he picked up the water bottles and smashed them down was it like a, that was um, that to get through to um, the next round of the Europa League wasn't it no, no what was, was it the league, the league game that was it. It. no but then oh no that was the yeah, that, that was, was a qualifier the, yeah uh, yeah, United won yeah, one yeah. nil. The la like um, Fellaini, Fellaini, yeah, got Fellaini in the last yeah. One, yeah. and still, even winning wasn't good enough. Let's just remember the the, the Ollie time, should we? Should we do that? Well, Ollie Ollie comes in. Now, Ollie comes in, yeah. But when it was all nice and uh, <laughs> the United fans yeah. were full of positivity and everything was going going like United's way and Ollie to do this that, and the other, properly saved them from where they were and to prove the point in Europe to a point. We'll get to that. But it mm. really got them in the mix of everything because they were about to decline further down the table. So there's not enough credit. Ollie's Everyone takes pictures wins. for Ollie's with the wins. But when, when, when there's a manager who needs support, 
where, where are those people? It just turns into negativity in the game and they want a head on a plate and who's to blame and then we'll go Woodward Turns and everything fast, else. So quickly, because yeah. the week before this, I, I said it on, on, on the podcast before, the, the amount of time is not justified in order to, okay, just a, a week ago, you were unlucky because PSG just romped you with with Messi, yeah. who's had a standing ovation at Old Trafford. Yeah, but like, be it, so. yeah, and before that, it was it was a case of whoa, you've just you've just made an impact and beaten like a massive European team. And yeah, Ollie, it was a lot amazing. of positivity. So, and then that like time. a week, it was a, maybe a week and a half after when it wasn't happening domestically. Yeah. Then all this abuse happens, and it's yeah. like, what are you? Fi- they're not fighting for anything because no. Liverpool are so far ahead. Yeah. And you went out to Lionel Messi. You know what I mean? Like, and that Barcelona squad team w- was absolutely impeccable against you. Like, yeah. you can't ask for more than that. So when it's looked back on for this season, all that there is spewing negativity. Yeah. On the whole, I'd say that's a pretty decent United season. Obviously, there's glitches and there's issues, but it doesn't help the negativity put through. Scapegoats, blame, being unrealistic. It's just violence and abuse. There's no, there's no room for it. You know what I say? The one thing I don't agree with you on there. Mm. This is the worst season I've ever seen Manchester United play. As in style of football. Yeah, style of football. But then there's a regen, like Renaissance of Oli, and then teamwork, and there was. It's it's not. It's one of the worst seasons I've ever known as a United fan ever. So much deeper than just changing a manager. If you continually change a manager without addressing the real issues of that squad, then you're going to have problems for the next however many years. There are bigger issues of that club. The fact is that there are businessmen who are in charge of the footballing decisions of the club, which is wrong, because they're only out to make money. So why would they sanction world signings? I, I'm because gonna... hang on, they wouldn't. They wouldn't do it. You, the other problems are there's players there who are coasting and need to leave. And to get as many players out the door as you need is unfeasible in one summer. Yeah. So we're going to have to get rid of some now, bring in good quality young replacements and hope that they develop into world-class players. And then next season, sell another few players, deadwoods, bring in more young talent. And it's going to have to be that yeah, we're going to take... Man. We're going to take risks on young players like James Swansea, who is heavily linked at the minute with United. Yeah. It's that thing of, we'll get rid of the old and we'll bring in the new in the hope that they turn into world-class players and develop them. It's an exciting time to be a United fan. However, it because if they get it right, if they get this right and they make the right decision for the club, it's very exciting time to be a United fan now. Because it's yeah. you we're gonna see a re the potential rebirth of Manchester United over the next few years. Especially if they can which get is direct, my positive way of doing it. Director you know? of football's necessary as well. Yeah, look they need to have that function between the dressing room and the the dressing room and the boardroom. Because at the minute they don't have a link. No. They have a man who helped the Glaciers buy the club and put them into debt. Also, He's, can I can I just say the last game actually not a game of the season against Cardiff City. I'm sorry, not enough credit was given to Cardiff City. No, absolutely not enough not credit good. was given no, to, to Neil Etheridge, who had the, like yeah. one of the games of the season, which denied denied United you know, actually Neil getting Etheridge back in the game. Neil Etheridge won me 13 points on the last day of the yeah. season fantasy <laughs> football. <laughs> absolutely, <He's laughs> and, absolutely and I was cursing myself because I was like, oh, they're always mm. United, <laughs> and they're not, relegated. Like United have got something to play for. They're going to get pumped. Not Neil enough. Etheridge will be 13 points. Not enough was said about that victory for Cardiff City in Cardiff City's favour. And right. do you know the other little caveat to that? It, I bet you that was fueled by spite as well. Like, Ollie, who used to be a Cardiff City manager, against yeah. that on the biggest platform. I just, I can just imagine Warnock in in the dressing room. Oh, he definitely would have used gear, to. gear in a yeah. But let's not take anything yeah. away from the fact that like that performance of Cardiff City was such a it's proud good. bow right. out. Can we... Okay, that that's that's basically the little dissecting. And we're going to stitch the body up, the United yeah. body up, because you're in a mood now. We need to wrap it up. <laughs> right. We're just stitching up, and we'll just hope that it just Hang on. settles and becomes like just a scar which will move on in the future, because like you said, you're going to get excited. Oh, unless you've been living under a rock, mm. you can't help but notice that the Premier League is over. It was a lovely season, though. It was a good old season. It was a good old Best season. Best in recent history. In recent history, yeah, I agree with you. It was very, very good. And it went right down to the last day of the highs, title race. And lows. at certain points, it looked like Liverpool might be winning it. 20 minutes. Yeah. It was 20 minutes. Yeah, but that 20 minutes in the, the magnitude of this title race, 
felt like an eternity. Yeah. It felt huge. It Especially wasn't... when you don't want them to win it. No, exactly. And it's like <laughs> City, you knew City would annihilate Brighton, like yeah. surely. Yeah. And Wolves was the tricky Ever fixture. Green, Glenn, and right. you're like, oh my yeah. God. But then when Liverpool went 1 0 up and Brighton were actually defending well, I thought, is it happening? Um, so, right. We're... Anyway, we're the main end, point of this at the minute is it's over. And like last year, we want to announce our predictions. So now this is the second announcement of predictions. So what we, we did is our second the full season as a podcast now. Yeah. So at the beginning of the season, we did predictions on who would win the Premier League, who would be the top four, the top goal scorer, who would be relegated, and then who would win La Liga and Serie A. Mm. And then a couple of sets, like separate questions, which I won't say now because I've both, forgotten what we were. both did the same predictions. We did the same predictions. Same predictions and Mitch. So for this, yeah. we will direct Mitch's to you. Pat. Right, okay. Okay. So, Premier League winners. Skinner, mm-hmm. We, you said Man City. Uh, Mitch said Man City and so did I. Mm-hmm. Okay. We okay. all said Man City. Well so done. that's really good. Good start. The interesting part about this section, if you listen back to it, because it made me laugh when I heard that I said it, I actually said, and go back and listen to it, I think it's like 49, maybe, it's, it's last season. We, uh, I said, I think actually it could be Liverpool's year though, and they'll push Man City to the final day. Did I you? said that and I went, oh, well, I'm impressed. And <laughs> then I was like, obviously I know what I'm talking about, because I've said that at the start of the season, brilliant. And then I say straight after, and I think Man United will be very close behind. <laughs> Oh, and I went, oh, you, can, mo- you absolutely love it. Devalues it. More of, yeah, so it devalues that. Right, that top four. Oh, Mitch okay. said, in this order, City, Liverpool, United, Chelsea. I said the same. I thought United would finish just behind. Now, Skinner's was the best on this, because okay. he says City will win it, mm-hmm. obviously. I'll read it as you say it originally, though. You went, oh, easy. City, Chelsea, Spurs, United. Someone said Easy. <laughs> you did. You used the word easy at the start. Because you you got it. I listened to it yesterday. Um, then Mix went, so you think Liverpool are going to finish fifth? And you went, oh, no. Shit, I forgot about Liverpool. And so you the took Spurs, Spurs out. out. That's a yeah, shame. so mm. I wrote it as I'm listening. So the cross-outs are where I, you change your mind. City, Chelsea, Liverpool, United you went for. Mm. So you thought Chelsea would finish second. And United would finish fourth. So I, we, we did, look, here yeah, or thereabouts. Yeah, we much, all yeah. had Liverpool and City... Me and Mitch both had them first and second. We then went wrong with the rest. Top goal scorer? Oh, top goal scorer. Who was that? Wasn't there like three of them? Aubameyang, with Salah, Aubameyang, Mane. Or yeah. all the same number. 22. Yeah. Aubameyang, Mane, Mane and Salah. Um, what was it? Mitch and Skinner said Harry Kane. Okay. I said Lukaku. Oh. <laughs> oh, that's a shame. Because I thought that bringing Fred in would mean Pogba was played further up the pitch. I remember I did a whole, I did a whole thing on it. I said, Pogba is going to get pushed further up the pitch because Fred's been brought in to be the defensive midfielder, oh, good which call. will free up Lukaku. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Should have so worked. Like, okay. Should have worked, shouldn't it? I was like, right, okay, that's shame, fine. But... Yeah. Uh, relegated teams. <laughs> I said, I'll start with me. I say Cardiff, Brighton and Southampton. So we've got Cardiff, right? Brighton I nearly got right yeah. and I also said it wouldn't surprise me if Burnley were relegated really? and they just got into Europa and I said it wouldn't surprise me if Burnley were relegated so I was at points me and Mitch talked about it a couple one of his last shows I was like he said you said Burnley might get dragged in and they were nearly relegated yeah, at that yeah. point. I was like I know I'm going to look a football genius if I say that <laughs> um, but it didn't happen so Mitch said good. Huddersfield, Cardiff and Watford Watford, Watford, Watford for some reason Skinner, again, as you said it, Huddersfield, and then I said, do you think Cardiff will go down? And you went, oh, reluctantly, reluctant. yes, Cardiff. And then you said, the third team get relegated, but we West Ham. <laughs> Could it be? Could it be? <laughs> Which made me chuckle. Uh, and then you said, no, I'm going to stick to my Cardiff beliefs, and went Southampton. So you got Huddersfield. Southampton. Well, this is where it gets, this is where it gets really good. Yeah, um, yeah. This is where it gets... The Liga. Yeah. Mitch said Barca, you said Real, I said Atletico. <laughs> so Mitch was right. Syria, every one of us at the same moment, we went, right, who in Syria? We all went Juventus. <laughs> um, then my question was, will you run, Will Ronaldo mm. score over 30 goals in Syria? A? You survey were said. very, very sure that he would. I would have said, yeah. Yeah, no, he didn't. 
Ronaldo hasn't scored over 30 goals now for four years. Really? Is that, is that, wow. no. In a league no. title. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Me and Mitch said no, and we were indeed right. Um, it's lost it. More assists. The question was who will get more assists, Paul Pogba or Naby Keita? <laughs> <laughs> That was one of the questions. Right. <laughs> All of us said Pogba, we were correct. Pogba had 13, um, 13 assists this season. When he could be bothered. Mm. When he could be bothered. He had 13 assists this season. Naby Keita had one. That's what, one more than I thought he would have let's, been. Let's, we'll, go, we'll talk a bit more Pogba in the next section. Yeah, we'll talk a bit more Pogba. Is this harsh to put any blame on him? Move on, next part. Right, move on. Okay, I need to find out. I've just realised I haven't found out what the actual answer was to this. Um, there's goals for on this. Right, the question was, <laughs> who will score more goals, Harry Kane or Huddersfield? That was the question that was asked. Our survey said. Our survey said when I found out the answer. Fine. Well. Have a look for the what answer. You, what are you looking for? <laughs> right, we said I need to know how many goals Edersfield scored, and you find out how many goals Harry Kane scored. What would you say, Pad, to that? Um, I mean, who well, would score it, more goals in before a the season? I probably would have said Kane, but obviously he's had rubbish injury problems this year, hasn't he? So I'd, I'd, I'd imagine Huddersfield have scored more this season. Okay, right, Huddersfield this this t- uh, season. Scored 50 goals. Yeah, Harry so, Kane. <laughs> no, he can't go that. But in Europe as well, I'm not sure. Yeah. I'm betting, no, it was how many. Because the year before that, Harry Kane had outscored Huddersfield. Did he? Uh, yeah. I didn't know. So the year before, and Huddersfield stayed up that yeah. first season. Yeah, of course. But yeah. he scored more goals than them in the league title. So I believe that he scored. Much every I, don't game game that inclu- I don't know if that includes. Yeah, it would do. 20, He's got. Yeah. He hasn't look. He hasn't got fifty, has he? No. So they were our, they were our predictions. I think it's a mixed bag, if I'm being honest. Pretty good though. But yeah, pretty good, especially the top four ones. They yeah. were pretty close. Yeah, the top four were all right. We all picked City. We all said Juventus, but yeah, 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 yeah. So, yeah it was all right. Yeah. It was much better than when we predicted Ian Acho would score more goals than Rashford. <laughs> that was, <laughs> went down like a lead if, balloon. If one of the questions had been name the two teams in the Champions League final. Would you have said these two? No. Either? We've done it. We did. We actually did a pr- prediction. We for that. did. Pre- yeah. I actually wanted PSG. Uh, he said. Juve. He said PSG versus Juventus would be the final because it would be Gigi Buffon for PSG. Oh yeah, of course. That would have been yeah, his yeah. new. So if Personally, he wins, yeah. if he wins it, he finally gets a Champions League winners medal. If but, he doesn't, then it means that Juventus have won the Champions League. And yeah. Beat, and and he would have been happy. Yeah. Yeah. It was, yeah, that would have been a great final. Wanted to do a I, wanted, yeah. I wanted Barca versus Ajax. Ajax? You were, mm. yeah. No, it's how everything's gone quite recently on Ajax. Like, they've still performed above yeah. and beyond. Yeah, they're really just, good. Boom, like that. Yeah. No one's yeah. even talking about it. Like, even that's the are. difference, isn't right. it? Right, yeah. we stopped it there. That was a no, that, we've right, gone right. into Champions League. We were talking about predictions. All right, pretty, pretty much so, bang on then. Right. Pretty much bang on. Well, yeah, pretty you much. You said West Ham, but apart from that, I said Lukaku. Apart from that, we're all right. Lukaku, top goal scorer. Yeah. FA Cup final. It's the biggest cup competition in the world, the FA Cup. It's a great, great, great competition. Is it great? Man City versus Watford. Does anyone give Watford a chance? Is it right in saying everyone wants Watford to win this game? I think everyone's yeah. got a soft spot for the underdog. Wouldn't it be, yeah, wouldn't it be a better Especially result? For Man City everyone. wouldn't be aggrieved because they'll still win a double. Yeah. This it's is a domestic tra- treble. Because no one's done that. This would be annoying for them to be the first ones to do it as well. Yes. Okay, Watford's I think everyone wants them to win. They got some match winners in their team, Watford, like Delafeo. You know, they, so yeah, they've got the potential to have I a little bit of an upset. Yeah. yeah, Imagine if Dini scores. Troy, a Troy Dini. <laughs> this, this, I really want him to, to to produce in this game. Yeah. Because the way he spoke so eloquently, every one of us can relate to that man and understand. Like that's what makes it real to me. None of this celebrity football millionaire billionaire way of being. This is like pride and pride in itself, and yeah. this is your moment. If Man City, look, if Man City do win it, domestic, they have done magnificently this season. Yeah. Like everyone is still saying how good Liverpool have been. Well, Man City have been better. Not yeah, Liverpool get have been too romanticised this season. Yeah, and Man City have been seen as this behemoth juggernaut that's just coming for you. 
and that wasn't the case. Like yeah. Man City are amazing. Graphic. Well, yeah. Man City are incredible. No, they have been good. And to think how far that, uh, away from Liverpool they were. At, what was it? January? Were they nine? Yeah, they were January? Yeah, they were a long That's way insane. beyond. That's insane. Fantastic for the neutral. It will be a great game for the new. Give me a score. Me give you a score. Give me a All score. Right, I'm going to go five nil Man City. That's what I was going to say. Yeah. All right, I'm, I'm going to say six nil City. Done. We're all saying Man City. I've got a couple of shout outs. Charlie Austin for his foul mouth rant against VAR. Yeah, fair enough. That was a good that was Love a good that. time. That was my, one of my favourite macromini moments. Mike Dean. A big shout out to Mike Dean. Big shout out stick. to Mike Dean. Go on. Him on the fence where he's it's fantastic. celebrating. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, is it Tramia? Yeah. It is Tramia. Tr- celebrating at Tramia. Iconic. It, yeah. Iconic in its in it its probably, yeah. My final shout out is a Twitter handle called Goalies119. Follow that. It's the art of goalkeeping. There's some fantastic uh, illustrations in there. All your goalkeeper needs. We're doing it in a minute. 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 To the bedroom. Nice. Blitzing through. Here's a bit of feedback. Tony Yaboa, Splendid. George Weir's cousin. Ace. Steve Guppy. He just... He was a voice maybe left and he was a wolf howl. Fraser Digby says, yeah. more goalkeepers. I'm with you there, Fraser. Cafu just says, stop calling me. You probably should stop calling him. Should we have we been excessive mm. with Cafu? Well, thank you very much as usual for your feedback mm. this week. If mm. you want to get in touch with us, mm. at Attach Line Run on Twitter, mm. you could feature next week. July 10th, Little Man Coffee yeah. is our next live show. We're doing a charity football quiz. We're writing ourselves. All proceeds are going to mind. Champions League? We're going straight... Champions League, Little Man Lock-In. <laughs> oh, oh, hang on a minute. Don't be breaking other news. Let's get the quiz out of the way. July the 10th, we're doing the quiz. So that's after. Oh, okay. All right. Shut up. <laughs> 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 then after we're doing the... Like, before, for the first time ever announced on the podcast... <laughs> Champions League Little Man Lock-In. We are doing the Champions League Little Man Lock-In June the 1st. Hang on, let me figure this out. We have hired out Little Man Coffee. Come down to Little Man Coffee. We're hosting a watch party. Come watch the Champions League final with us. We are doing... We're projecting the game onto a big screen by projector. We're breaking all of this. Yeah. It's going to be... No, it's going to be the... Mm. largest private screen in the Champions League in Cardiff Champions League Little Man come Lock-in. down to Little Man all you need to do is email us at attachlinerun at gmail.com with your name and how many tickets you would like we have 150 tickets to the gig um, it's going to go quick so yeah yeah get in touch now you That's Champions us. League Little Man Lock-in Champions League Little Man Lock-in put that as your title or your email Champions too big League for a hashtag Little Man C L L June the first. But yeah, right, apart from that, it's been a really good week. Thank you very much, Paddy. Thanks, guys. Right, see you soon. There are the stairs going up to the bedroom. There's a quiz happening. We're bringing back the charity football quiz at Little Man Coffee, our live home. July 10th is when it is, and we'll be we'll be hosting it. Well, you, Skinner, me, Luke, and Paddy. The charity that we're donating for this is Mind. We we love we love Mind, don't we? They're a charity close to our hearts. So yes. we have we've decided to give give all money made there. Mm. Um, come down. It's ten pound a ticket per team. Um, you know, five people per team. So it's five aside again. And yeah, just come. We'll we'll be doing a, a really good quiz, and we'll be doing this sort of thing live. There's a quiz happening. <laughs> There's a quiz happening on tenth of tenth. It's Wednesday. <laughs> So straight in, you've got the stairs.